Welcome to Looking at Legal Stuff. Today we have six hearings covering the case of a couple where dad wants a separation and mom wants a divorce. Dad says she's been withholding visitation since they separated, but mom says she wants supervised visitation because she says he has mental health and substance abuse issues. Mom also has an issue with dad's brother, with whom he lives and doesn't want the children around him. Let's see what the judge thinks. All right, Bissig and Gibson, 23-300-308-08. I'm here. All right, good. Good morning. I keep wanting to say afternoon. Um, and it looks, I have Zach Bissig. Can you hear us, Mr. Bissig? Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. So, um... I have a temporary family law order that's been submitted by Ms. Gibson along with um, a temporary parenting plan. Uh, Mr. Bissig, have you been provided those proposed orders? Yes, I have, and I have responded with a declaration. Was that the one that was filed on the first? It was filed last Friday. Yeah, the first. Hold on here. All right, is this y'all's first uh, appearance in court on this matter? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right, just give me one moment. All right, and this is a petition just for legal separation, not dissolution. Is that correct? Yes, and a parenting plan too. And I do not agree to the legal separation. I want to be divorced, not legally separated. And also, Your Honor, I did not receive anything uh, for a response from Mr. Bissig. Mr. Big Bissig, did you re um, serve Ms. Gibson with your response? Yes, my legal advisor told me I could mail it to her. So I did that. All right, I don't have um, okay, a couple different things. I don't have a declaration and confirmation of service. I don't have a uh, anything that the court stated that there was an agreement to service um, beyond either direct service. So normally there needs to be an order that the court grants uh, for service by mail. You can't just mail someone something and consider that service unless the court authorizes that. That's on Mr. Bissick's part, not on mine, correct, Your Honor? Well, if you didn't receive yeah. the stuff from the first, then, um, and I, there's no confirmation of service in the file for anything that was uh, filed on the first. Oh, just wanted to make sure. Thank you. So I don't know who told you that, that that's okay. It is okay if the court allows you to uh, or authorizes a service by mail. Um, all right, I, ha I hate having to do this, but this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, um, it, I think it's important for the court to have all the information uh, to make a decision. So I have two options right now. I can either disregard everything that was filed on the first, uh, which obviously would be, um, would probably be not in Mr. Bissig's best interest, or I can uh, require him to serve Ms. Gibson with all the information that was filed. So that looks like it was 10 pages of text messages and photographs and an a a declaration affidavit uh, that was, provided and signed, and there's some uh, um, attachments to that, uh, and set this over one week to the 13th. So that's what I'm going to do. So Mr. Bissig, you need to serve those uh, on her personally, not you directly. It needs to be a, a non-party to the case and file proof of service, and then we'll come back on the 13th to hear the matter and get temporary orders entered. Okay, and I do, for the record, have both um, a proposed parenting plan from Mr. Bissig and a proposed parenting plan from Ms. Gibson. 
those will, uh, I'll ask the clerk to retain those. So the court has those for our hearing next week. So you don't need to refile those unless um, there's something about them that you want to change between now and next week. Okay. So Ms. Mr. Gibson, if you don't serve her uh, those documents and provide proof of the, the service, then next week the court's just going to move forward without considering those documents. Okay. Okay, Your Honor. All right. So set it over to the 13th of September at 9 a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Do I, I think I have Zach Bissick online and do I have Megan Gibson? Yes, I'm here, Your Honor. I'm okay. here, Your Honor. Let's, let's talk about your case. This is 23-300-30808. Um, I have temporary orders that have been filed by Ms. Gibson. I don't know, Mr. Bissick, have you received these orders? Yes, I have, Your Honor. Okay. Let me just jump into your digital file here. Your Honor, I do want to just say, due to some medical issues over the last week, I was unable to get my evidence uh, served to Zach Bissig that I had filed with the court. Um, I ended up in the hospital with a concussion and a bruised tailbone and have been bound bed rest since. Okay. And that was um, some of the documents that you filed in support of your temporary orders? Yes, they were my evidence for why I feel the temporary order I had uh, submitted to you guys was necessary. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bissick, my understanding is you um, have filed your own temporary orders and proposed parenting plan in this case. Yes, Your Honor, and I have served her already. I saw that you had served her. I think the concern when you all were in front of the last judicial officer was proper service. And it looks like we still might have an issue, Mr. Bissick, of you being properly served with all of the documents that the court would be relying upon today. So um, let me ask you, Ms. Gibson, when do you believe you would be able to get that served on Mr. Bissick? Honestly, Your Honor, at this point, I would like to just move forward and strike out my evidence and go off of, I did prepare a statement if I'm allowed to read it um, and just kind of just go forward. I my head is throbbing due to my concussion mm -hmm. and I don't know when I'm going to be better, let alone filling up for everything. So I would like to just move forward. Right. So I wouldn't be allowing you that kind of testimonial statement. Again, we're without Mr. Bissick being given a heads up on what that is. That's why we require these to be done with declarations. We don't do trial by surprise here. So um, if you are saying that there is something that you are going to rely upon in this hearing for temporary orders, I do need to have you serve it on him. Um, we could ask Mr. Biscuit, Bis Biscuit, excuse me, Bissig. my mouth is dry. I need to stop drinking coffee and move over to water. Um, if you would be willing to accept service of that by email, we could probably get that done much quicker than if it's personal service. I don't know if that appeals to the parties in any way or is acceptable to you, sir. Um, not really, because I do know for a fact she was at the bar last Saturday. Mm -hmm. So, so I think she had plenty of time to do it, and she's just making excuses now. And it's already been a while, and I really want to see my kids and get this going. Well, I understand, but I'm telling you that she, whatever the reason, she has documents that she is going to serve on you. Would you agree to have those served by email or would you like those to be served on you personally before we move forward? If she does it by email, we can get you back on the docket much quicker. Uh, how much further would it be if she, has, she personally has to do it? Well, it depends how long it takes to find you and personally serve you.
I'll just take the email. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. I'll just take the email, Your Honor. The email. Ms. Gibson, are these documents that you can serve by email? Um, yes, one of them is a statement, and then uh, I have all the pictures that I had submitted to the court already on my computer that I can email to him as well. Okay. Please get those emailed this week so that he can file any objection or response to that evidence. And then I'm going to set you to the September 27th, 9 a.m. docket. All right. Um, and then for the statement, it's not something that I had submitted to the court. I would need to get that also submitted to the court along with my proof of service. Yeah, you would want to do it as a declaration. Yes. All right. Just want to make sure. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Yes. And then um, you both can log in via Zoom. I'll keep your temporary orders here that you've both proposed. And we'll see you back on September 27th at 9 a.m. To be real quick, so this may be something we set over, but I'll hear from the parties first. Number 21 on our docket of 21 is 233-0030808. This is Zach Biscuit, Biscuit and Megan Gibson. I'm here, Your Honor. I'm here, Your Honor. Thank you. I know this has been a very, very long docket. My apologies to you because you are the most recently filed case, as you can hear, some of these cases have been going on since 2021. I know yours probably feels like a long time. You filed in July of 2023, but as you can see, um, you are the most recently filed case. Um, we were together on September 13th, and um, I think at that time we were discussing mailing of evidence to the other parties. I'll I'll get some brief input from you, but then I will just have to give you a new court date. Okay. I was able to email the documents to Mr. Bissig, as well as turn in my declaration to the courthouse. Um, you should have the uh, proof of mailing or hand delivering in the system as I did turn that in last week. And I, again, I have your temporary family law orders here. Um, have you also served these on the prosecuting attorney's office? I was unaware of having to serve to prosecuting, prosecuting attorney's office. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Looney. Your Honor, um, we have already sent out proposed uh, child support worksheets to the parents. We're aware of what's happening in the case. We're just waiting for a temporary order to be entered so we can request a child support hearing date. Got it. Okay. Um, Your Honor, there is already child support ordered towards Mr. Bissig to pay. Um, he is now thirteen fifty in debt. To okay. the state. So, yeah, hold on, ma'am. Okay. So, sir, what is your position? on have you now received the proposed temporary orders yes and i also responded back to her did you file your own proposed orders yes i don't know why i started it all sorry i'm having trouble understanding you you did or did not yes i did i was the one that started it all okay maybe i don't have those as originals in front of me are you talking about, nope, those are hers. The July 25th proposed parenting plan, is that what you're talking about? Yes, I did that one. Okay. Um, is your current request the same as what you requested in the July 25th parenting plan? Yes, for my temporary one. Okay. So I'm going to do this just because of our time. I'm now 40 minutes behind starting my next docket. Um, I'm going to give you all a new court date. Do, do either of you expect to be filing any additional documents before I make a decision on your temporary orders? No, I don't plan on unless she does something for me. Okay. Ms. Gibson, do you intend to file any additional documents before I rule on the temporary orders? No, Your Honor. I've submitted everything I needed to. Okay. 
Let me look and see. I could put you on next week, but let me see how many we have already. Um, there is just one thing, Your Honor, with- Just hold on, ma'am. Just hold on. Okay, right now we're sitting at nine cases next week. Um, that probably will go up a little bit, but we're not gonna be anywhere near the 21 cases we had today. So since you all have submitted all of your paperwork, I'm going to just bump you over one week to October 4th at 9 a.m. Does that work for you, Ms. Looney? Your Honor, the state's request would just be if we could set it out slightly longer, that would okay. give us time to get a child support order proposal out and do everything on the same day. Perfect. Let's do that. Um, what are you thinking? Uh, four weeks to give time um, for service and any response? Three to four weeks should be fine. We could get the order out fairly quickly. We'll be using the same worksheets we've already sent out to the parents with our proposed uh, worksheets and notice of parents back in August. Okay, so um, to the parties, I'll give you the choice between October 18 or October 25th. What works for you? Uh, Mr. Bissick? Uh, the standard of the better, please. Okay, we'll do October 18th. Ms. Gibson, does that work for you? Uh, I'll make it work to the best of my ability. Okay, so October 18, 23 for review of the temporary orders. And then Ms. Gibson, you had a question? It was just about setting it over because I do have a job and I work mornings. Um, I will be working that day. So I'll just have to try to see if they can get my shift covered out. Yeah, understood. If you run into issues with work, we certainly don't want anyone to lose their job over having to come to court. If the 18th is not doable for you due to work, please reach out to court administration and we can handle that, okay? Okay, yeah, I'll talk to them because I've already missed three days for court already. So. Yeah, I mean, as oh. you probably heard from a lot of the parties here, yeah. they've been in court for years. So, yeah, so. This, this is a marathon, not a sprint, yeah. unfortunately. And I feel your pain. I'm not, you know, trying to diminish that at all. Um, but uh, again, I think the remedy here is if it is a problem for your work, just let the court know and we can work with you. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you both. Um, I got a question real quick. Okay, go ahead. Um, since it's taken so long, I would like to be able to visit my kids. Is that anything possible? Yeah, I'm not going to make any rulings right now um, on visitation. I'm going to just reserve all of it for October 18th, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you both. You're free to log off. The Zach Biskig, Bissig and Megan Gibson case. Two three three zero zero three zero eight zero eight, and Ms. Looney is on that matter. Thank you, everyone, for being patient. Let me grab files here. Ms. Gibson, can you hear the court? Yes, I can. Okay. And can. Mr. Bissig, can you hear the court? Yes, I can. Okay. So this is uh, two three three zero zero three zero eight zero eight. Just opening up the digital file here. What I have in front of me are uh, temporary orders proposed by Ms. Gibson, it looks like. And then I also have the state's motion for a child support order. Um, I guess Ms. Looney, first I'll turn to you on the state's request. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I am not sure, but I believe at the last hearing, uh, Mr. Bissick had also stated he would be filing a proposed parenting plan. Um, so the state had put in proposed orders based on what we knew, um, but I don't know if that has changed as to what requests would be made today. So it may be best to do the parenting plan piece first and then we can address child support. Okay. 
And I do see that. So Mr. Basig, you filed a proposed parenting plan recently. Ms. Gibson, have you received that? I also filed a um, temporary parenting plan. Uh, that's what I just said. I have your, I have a temporary parenting plan that you filed. And I'm, so I'm asking, um, your, hold on. I'm asking Ms. Gibson if she's received your proposed parenting plan. On what date was that filed, Your Honor? Um, looks like maybe in our court on September 6th or thereabouts. I have not received a parenting plan and from then on, I received one when he had originally filed for the legal separation. Um, I have you, but, service that day of her being served by Kevin. So let me just, well, let me back up a little bit. Have the two of you, do the two of you have, have you exchanged your proposed parenting plans with each other? Yes, I have, Your Honor. I have served him with my okay. proposed parenting plan, yes, Your Honor. Okay. And do we typically, and I only ask, I'm going to ask the clerk a question because I saw this on the facilitator worksheet. There's one where they meet with the facilitator even for temporary orders. Yeah. Or they don't, it's just final. And that, okay. Because I saw there was that option. So I want to make sure I wasn't missing some step. Okay. 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 So the, do the two of you, have the two of you had a chance to talk about your temporary parenting plans and areas that you agree or disagree? No, you're not. You don't talk to me or want to communicate with me. Okay. So it sounds like you are asking me to make the decisions about, well, do I actually- Your Honor, may I say something? Who is that? Megan. Go ahead. Um, I have tried to contact Mr. Bissig on multiple occasions. He has not answered my phone calls. He has rarely even answered the children's phone calls. Um, so being able to communicate with him about anything has been impossible. I have personally reached out to him multiple times to try to figure this out on our own, but he does not answer me. He will not answer my phone calls whatsoever. So you guys are very far apart on obviously what you want to see happen here. For instance, Mr. Bissig, you know, you're saying no parent has any evidence of abandonment, neglect, abuse, DV, assault, et cetera. Ms. Gibson, obviously your allegations are that you're asking the court to restrict visitation because of a lot of, I mean, I think you, you marked every box, neglect, emotional or physical substance abuse, abuse of use of conflict, withholding the child. Sounds like have you all, have you ever had a guardian ad litem in any of your cases? Uh, this has been our only case so far and no, we have not. Well, that's what I mean. In, in the entirety, it looks like you filed this case back in July. Yes, no, I we did. have not. Hold on, petition for legal separation. Um, have you had a guardian ad litem assigned to your case at all? No, Your no, Honor. Your Honor. Okay, what is happening with child visitation right now? She's withholding the kids from me. She's what? She's withholding the kids from me. She won't let me see them. She only lets me talk to them on the phone when she chooses the time. I have given him multiple opportunities to see, speak with the children and he has not taken me up on them. He does not reach out to try to get time with the kids. And when I have offered, he has not taken me up on the offer because it's not what he wants. Just, like, I'm just going back. Mr. Bissick, if I understand, do you still live with your brother? Yes, I do. I don't live with my brother. I live with my parents. 
I don't, you supposed, you said yes and no. Do you still live with your brother? Is your brother in the home that you are living in? Yes. Okay. And you think that that's a place where you want me to put the kids? Yes, because he's already taken care of it. He spent his time and the case has already been dismissed. He's not a threat. And Megan multiple times appreciated him and she never cared about it until now. What I'm going to do, because I do think there's a safety issue with the children present, I am going to adopt a temporary parenting plan. All that means, though, is that uh, this is what is going to be in effect. Um, while I'm also going to appoint a guardian ad litem to your case, when we go to do... Um, Final orders, before we get to final orders, I will want lots of input from the guardian ad litem. There's a, there's a lot here. So first, let's talk about the guardian ad litem. I think you heard on the prior case, I gave three names. Um, the names you have to choose from first are Heather Call, Amy Turnbull, and Ann Height. The parties disagree with any of those names or know any of these individuals and would be uncomfortable with them serving. No, Your Honor. I do not disagree. <clears throat> so I'm going to do Heather Call. You all with some return dates. Um, I'm going to, as a starting point, I'm looking at Ms. Gibson's parenting plan. Um, I am going to observe. <laughs> You have, ma'am, you have all the three A and B disqualifying factors listed. I'm, I'm reserving on all of those. I don't have enough information. And um, so I'm going to white out your X's here. That is something that the guardian ad litem will address with the court. So you'll see on this order, it says reserved. Sir, that means I'm not making any findings that any of those limiting factors apply to you. Um, what's the current, what's happening currently? Is there any visitation happening with Mr. Bis supervised or unsupervised? Um, I've tried doing supervised with me there but he has only come once. That's when I set it up through his mom so that him and some of his family could come out and see the kids. Okay. So um, just for now, for purposes of this temporary order, because it seems like it has been quite some time and I think the, the concerns, sir, I have are, I guess the, the, the statements, well, the guardian ad litem is going to look into your household and whether it's a safe place right now. I don't think I have enough information to say that it's a safe place for young children, given who resides there. Um, so I am going to require supervised contact um, with the children only. It can be a professional supervisor or a non-professional supervisor. Who would be the non-professional that you two could agree on? I agree with my grandma Doty. Ma'am, is that an agreeable name for you? Um, sorry, I'm thinking. Yeah, I would agree with grandma Doty. Okay, uh, so give me her full name. Doris Jean. Jean Johnson. And how do you spell the last name? J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Oh, Johnson. I thought you said Jocelyn. Okay. Doris Johnson. Mm -hmm. And what is the brother's name? I'm putting in a statement that for the temporary order, 
um, the children are never to be at Mr. Bissick's home with, and what is his first and last name? Adam Bissig. Okay. okay, I'm going to reserve on let's see. Sir, are you, Mr. Bissick, are you in treatment right now for mental health or substance abuse? Yes, I've been in there for over two and a half years. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm not going to require an evaluation because it sounds like you're in treatment. Obviously, this can be revisited based on GL input. Um, you're just to continue with your treatment. Um, do you do random UAs as a part of that treatment? Yes, with them and my probation officer. Okay. So random UAs uh, will need to be clean before any visitation can occur. And if you don't do a UA or one is dirty, then visitation, even supervised, will cease. Right now, I am going to give primary decision making to Ms. Gibson. Um, dispute resolution it sounds like you all we've already talked about mediation and nobody thinks that's likely to be beneficial so I am going to require that you all come to court the custodian for now is Megan Gibson um, the only visitation schedule right now is the supervised visitation. Let's do, I didn't see in here. Did you propose how often supervised visitation was being recommended, Ms. Gibson? Um, no, I am fine with one to two times a week. Um, I'm more than happy to discuss with Mr. Bistig if he has a proposed what he would like to see the kids. Okay. So let's say one to two times per week up to uh, what's a workable solution hours wise for you all um, up to, you know, four hours a time. Um, so I do get off work at 2 p.m. and pick them up from daycare by 2.30. That would make it about seven o'clock. That's reasonable for me from like three to seven. Okay. Uh, he would need to make sure they get fed dinner and everything since we do have a routine as of school with my daughter. Okay. Summer schedule, same as school. Well, these are the kiddos not, they're not in school yet. Um, uh, Zara uh, is in Head Start. She goes Monday through Friday, uh, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. okay. The exchange location for parenting time will be the Kelso Police Department. Um, and then both parents are responsible for raising transportations, meeting a neutral location. But again, if that does occur, the super, if it's professionally supervised, they usually do it at a specific location where you'd be bringing the kids to that location. If it's grandmother, grandmother needs to be in the car for the exchange. So what I'm saying is this isn't going to be a situation where Mr. Bissick alone is picking up the kids and then going to grandma's house. Supervised visitation means at all times during the visitation. Okay. Um, Your Honor, one other thing. Um, it, would it be possible to have of, um, one of those apps for communication? so that we can make sure that if he plans on taking them somewhere, I'm aware of where he's taking the children so that if he's not where he's supposed to be and taking the kids to his parents' house where his brother does live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, so it's called, our yeah, I, what I can state is um, parents to communicate 
regarding location and timing of supervised visits via our family wizard. And as I understand it, and I actually, I met, I've been meaning to log on and check out if this is true. My understanding is um, it's an app that you use and there is a cost, but when you go to log in or once you log in, you can request a waiver for that cost. It's not much anyway, but there is a small cost, but you can request a waiver for it as I understand it. Okay. Um, so I am going to sign this temporary order and then I'm going to set us some return dates. Any questions or points of clarification that you need from me? Yeah, I don't really know why I didn't look at any of my evidence or anything. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, it just seems like you're just going off of her stuff. I'm, I thoroughly review your evidence, your filing, your case, and I am choosing to adopt her proposal because I believe right now, based on the evidence in front of me, that proposal is in the best interest of the children. It is also what is currently happening. So it causes the least disruption to the children. But sir, I'm not making any final ruling on what your relationship with your children looks like long-term. That's solely within your hands. So what I'm doing is assigning a guardian ad litem, Ms. Call, who is going to meet with both of you, meet with the children, meet with family members, and ultimately make a recommendation to this court about long-term what is in the best interest of the children, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, can you give me the ages of the children? Zara is four, Aries is two. Two, okay. And we'll point Heather Paul. Let's get you all some review dates. Okay, let's do, let's do a 30, 60, 90. So we'll do a 30 review date, a 60 day and a 90 day. So uh, if I'm roughly correct on that, we will be back for our first review, November 15, 2023 at 9 a.m. Our 60 day will be December 13, 2023 at 9 a.m. And then our 90 is gonna be January 17, 2024 at 9 a.m. Okay. And do you need me to repeat any of those dates? No. Good, Your Honor. Okay. And then last question. I just want to briefly go over everybody's income to see who is paying or what portion they are paying for GAL. Um, Ms. Gibson, what is your monthly income? My monthly income is around around two thousand dollars a month. Okay. How many dependents do you take care of on that? Two. Okay. Three, including myself. And do you have anyone else contributing to the household income? No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bissick, what's your income? Roughly around 2000 a month. Okay. And how many dependents do you take care of? Myself and the kids, and I have them. Okay. 2,000 with de two dependents plus yourselves. Um, I will find that this will be a county pay case right now, 100% a county pay, but um, I am going to reserve to a future hearing. Um, we'll take a look again at your finances and see if there's any reimbursement um, that would be reasonable to be paid to the county. As you heard from the last case, the maximum the county pays is 1485 
Um, and so if we had a hearing on reimbursement, it would be whether I believe the parties can reasonably afford some reimbursement of that amount. Okay, so I think I've got everything I need on. Guardian ad litem, are the phone numbers and addresses you all have used to file documents with the court still accurate? Yes, yes Your Honor. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, that is it for me. Any other questions? Yeah, because no. I feel like I'm getting misrepresented. I think I'm going to find a lawyer. Okay. Yeah, if you, um, Mr. Bissick, if you hire a lawyer, um, certainly just have them file their notice of appearance. And then we have specific dockets that we put the attorney represented matters on. So I, I always encourage people to seek counsel. It will change your hearing dates. That's fine. Okay. okay, with me. okay. Any other, Andrew, any other question? Oh, Yes, yeah, we just yes. asked to address child support, Your Honor, for yeah. Lewis. Let me pull those orders up that I set aside. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Looney. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so we did put in um, a proposed temporary child support order, um, which had Ms. <clears throat> excuse me, Ms. Gibson as the primary parent, as that was what we knew at the time, and we have taken parents' income from their 2023 uh, employment security data, and we have calculated that at 35 hours per week at their current wages, giving a net monthly income for Mr. Bissig of 2605 and for Ms. Gibson of 2607. So they are at a 50-50 um, responsibility for the children's care at this time. So the transfer payment that is being requested from Mr. Bissig to Ms. Gibson is 741. That's $370.50 per child. Excuse me. Okay, and I do see that in front of me. So, Mr. Bissick, have you had a chance to review the state's proposed child support order? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any disagreement with it other than your objection to the underlying custodial parent issue is noted for the record, and it is an issue that you can continue to raise with the court? Yeah. I feel like the price is a little up out there. Like I don't see how I'm supposed to support myself and do all that and take care of all my bills and still be able to live. So I'd be pretty much working for free at that moment. Okay. What tell tell me more? What are what types of expenses do you have that would render this payment? Um, something you would not be able to afford. I got court fines that I'm paying on, probation fees I have to pay for, treatment myself. And uh, I have, I help my parents out with rent, utilities, I have to buy food, gas to get back and forth to work. Have you supplied any of that information to the state regarding your, what we would potentially call any extraordinary expenses? No, they never asked for any of it. They just gave me the temporary one. Ms. Looney, is it something that you would want to look at and we could revisit this in a week or two, or uh, is this, would the state's position, position change with that information? It would not, Your Honor. The, the items that he's listed would not be reasons to deviate from the standard calculation under the law, so we would not be able to take those into account. Are there any other types of um, expenses, Mr. Bissick, that you have that you want the court to know about? Yeah, uh, household supplies, cleansiness. Okay, so much as you've heard Ms. Looney say, the court is gonna find that the, the types of expenditures you're telling me about are not ones that would create any sort of um, downward deviation of your obligation. I think it's quite fair that essentially the two of you um, 
have been deemed essentially 50-50 responsible for the financial costs of the children. Um, the amount being assessed per child, 370-50 is not excessive. I don't find anything in uh, your statements today or the or the filed documents that would cause me to deviate from that. Well, I was only paying child support and I was only paying 450 through the state. Sorry, say that again, I didn't hear you. I've already been paying child support through the state and that's only 450 a month. For these kids? Yes. I'm assuming that's probably because we didn't have a formal parenting plan into place, but maybe I'm wrong. Ms. Looney, what can you tell me about that? You're on a that's an administrative order. Um, the administrative process is different than the court process. So according to the economic table that we have to follow, um, yeah. this is where the child support standard calculation falls. Okay, I have signed these orders and filed, with, filed them with the court. Any other questions for me? No, I'm just going to get a lawyer. I completely understand, Mr. Bissick, and I wish you both and your children all the best of luck. Thank you. You're free to log out. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Bissick and Gibson, I think I have them both on here. This is 233-00-30808. Let me just get back into the digital part of that file. Both parties are, or both counties are hopping today, I think. Yeah. yeah. Right, everyone trying to get things done before the short week next week. I think it's true. Okay. So we had a lengthy hearing back on October 18th. Um, we appointed you at that point. So I know it hasn't been a ton of time. Yeah. Um, so I think we're just here kind of, my understanding is an initial review, seeing if there's been contact, if paperwork's been filled out. Um, yeah, so um, I have been able to have contact with Ms. Gibson. Uh, she completed her intake uh, packet and paperwork, sent it back to me. Um, I have not yet heard from Mr. Bissig. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, by the way. Is it Bissig? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I uh, texted him. To be fair, I texted him last night, to be fair to Mr. Bissig. But he did receive my packet uh, a little more than two weeks ago. Has it been two weeks yet? Almost two weeks ago. So I haven't had any contact or um, uh, input from Mr. Bissig yet. I have read through uh, the majority of the case file and kind of seen what's going on. Um, uh, it seems to me, if your honor is amenable to this, that a substance abuse evaluation would be appropriate uh, for Mr. Bissig at this time. I would be very curious also about a mental health, but I understand that there's financial restriction. And I wanna be careful about um, trying to make too many things happen at once. Um, but a hair follicle test and a substance abuse eval, I think would be very appropriate for Mr. Bissig going forward. Um, but again, I'm saying this without having read his his intake paperwork yet or having had a conversation. So I do want to be, I want to be aware of that. Okay. Um, Ms. Gibson, is a hair follicle test and substance abuse evaluation something um, that you would be requesting of uh, Mr. Bissick? Um, yes, uh, some things have been brought to my attention recently. I would appreciate for a hair follicle test and a new evaluation at a different clinic than he is currently going to for treatment. So Ms. Gibson, help me understand your request for that if he's already in treatment. Um, so he's been in treatment for a few years now due to a DUI. Mm -hmm. um, the whole time he's been in treatment that we were together he never quit drinking like he said he had. Um, the first visitation that he had with the kids, um, somebody had called me concerned about my children because they were at the same place that he was with the children and said that he seemed very intoxicated. Um, I don't have that in a sworn declaration or anything, so it's not something I'm going to consider today. Ms. Gibson, if you certainly want to 
get some sort of statement like that under penalty of perjury, the court could consider it. Okay. Mr. Bissick, um, so I'm going to ask you just a couple questions. First, are you able here pretty quickly to get that packet of info back to the GAL? Yes, I just haven't checked my email, so I didn't know it was in there until last night when she texted me. Okay. So we'll give you some additional time to get that done, no problem. And then um, are you, would you be in agreement to um, presenting yourself for a hair follicle test? Those results would go to the GAL. I don't think it's necessary since I'm already in treatment and in mental health and they already gave me UAs. I, I want to be clear to your honor. I did not understand that Mr. Bissig was currently in, in treatment. Like I said, I'm sort of missing some pieces of this puzzle. Yeah. So if that's the case and he has, and I can contact those folks and, re and receive that information from his current treatment facility, I'm very open to that. Yeah. So let's do this. Um, let's do a, a little bit of a shorter set over. I will take under advisement the hair follicle and sub eval testing, but I think that does make a lot of sense, Mr. Bissick. If you respond in that packet with the names and contacts for your current mental health and substance abuse treatment, uh, the GAL can review that information and it may negate the need to do anything more. Um, you know, to be fair, sometimes it raises more questions. We just don't know, but I'm not, I don't think there's enough here for any of us um, to say for sure that you need to go do these things. So let's have you get that contact information to the GAL and then we can go from there, okay? Okay. Okay. What, how long do you think you'll need, sir, to fill out that packet and get back in touch? Uh, I can start filling it out today. Okay. If we did, I mean, I know it's going to take some, I said short set over and then I realized, yes, but we have to request information from treatment providers. So we probably are looking at 30 days to be honest at the, at a minimum. So I'm, I'm looking at December 13 for a return date. How will that work? I was under the impression we already had a 60 day review date on December 13th at 9 a.m. We do actually. Then that'll, then that works even better. You all are already available. Thank you for pointing that out, ma'am. So um, let's- Your Honor, on that, that date on the 13th, would you like a written report uh, an interim written report or just a, a verbal review? Would that be just appropriate? A verbal review would be great. Okay. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. Go ahead, Your Honor. I apologize. <laughs> well, I was just going to ask if there's anything else that the parties need to talk to the court about today. Otherwise, we'll see you back on the 13th and just encourage Mr. Bissick to get that paperwork, paperwork back ASAP. Um, Your Honor, I do have yes. one thing. Okay. Uh, when we last saw you um, back in October, mm -hmm. um, I had requested when we were setting up all the limitations and all that for the visitation that I do receive a itinerary from Mr. Bissig um, for where he's going to be and what he's going to be doing with the children so that I do mm -hmm. know where the children are going to be at mm -hmm. for their safety. Um, that has been a problem. I had requested um, and messaged to Zach and Dodie, the uh, supervised visitation, his grandma who does supervised visitation with him, that I get itinerary a minimum of 12 hours in advance so that I'm aware of where my children are going to be. That hasn't been happening. Communication with him has been very difficult as when we are doing drop off and pick up, I'm trying to uh, like give him necessary information on the children and he just walks away from me. And so I'm just asking for uh, an itinerary in advance, not when we're getting there for drop off. I'm not, that, so help me understand why you're asking for that. I'm looking at the, the order and it says parents to communicate regarding locations and timing of supervised visits using our family wizard. That's what I wrote into the order. Mm -hmm. And why I'm not are, getting, Well, why are you needing itineraries 12 hours ahead of time? So that I know where my children are going to be because, um, how is I, that any, like, well, how is that any different than getting the itinerary when he, and within an hour of him picking up the kids or as he's doing it? I have to ask for it every time. Okay. When we're doing it. I'm yeah, asking I think, 
he make the communication towards me? Because he's not making the effort to communicate with me about the children. Okay. Well, I'm denying that request. I think that's an overstep into his parenting time. He does not need to provide an itinerary 12 hours ahead of time to you. This is a situation where everyone is going to have to learn to give a little with regard to your control. I understand that need when it's your kids, but what is in the parenting plan that he does need to comply with is at the time of the visits, he does need to tell you where those visits are taking place. He does. Mr. Bissick, you need to use our family wizard, wizard, excuse me, to communicate to Ms. Gibson where your visitation is occurring. Yes, you are. I can do that. But okay. she don't message me on there. She only asks me when I pick up the kids. So I tell her everything the time. Perfect. My grandma tells her, and she has not contacted my grandma at all. And that's, that's fine. And I see that Doris Johnson still is the supervisor who must be there at all times. So with that safety guard still in place, I'm not going to require 12 hour notification of where you're going to be, but sir, it is incumbent upon you to use that app and send your um, um, itinerary is a strong word. Please let Ms. Gibson know where you are with the children when you are with the children. I can do that. Okay. Your Honor, can I make a yeah. request regarding our family wizard? Can I, I'd like to be able to have access to that communication. Okay. So that yeah. I can monitor if that's helpful. I think that would be helpful. I call it magic. So I don't know how that actually would happen, but I assume you know how to make that happen. I do. Yes. Okay. Uh, I just like to sometimes have that included in the uh, minutes so that we can make sure that that's taken care of. Perfect. I will make that oral ruling that the GAL is to have access to the Our Family Wizard communications. Is there any objection, Ms. Gibson no. or Mr. Bissick, from that? No, Your no, Honor. With that. Okay. Okay, great. Well, we'll see you all back on December 13th. Good luck to you all. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Okay. And then we have Ms. Uh, call here for Bissick and Gibson. Let's go ahead and take that matter, uh, 233 Do I have Zach Bissig? Yes, you do. Or do I have Megan Gibson? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, let me just get into your digital file here quickly. 233 Um, so my docket notes um, indicate we had originally back in October um, had a motion hearing on what I believe were going to be temporary orders at that time, if that's correct. Um, we did enter child support orders. Um, but then we set over review hearings uh, on some of the underlying requests and I think specifically visitation. So maybe first I'll turn it over to our GAL to see where we're at and what we might be anticipating today. Good morning, Your Honor. Thanks for your patience with me uh, yes. bouncing around a bit today. Um, yeah, I so at this point in time, I have received intake packets from both parties. However, I didn't receive them. I didn't receive Mr. Bissig's packet until late last week. Um, I have attempted to set up a, a, a home visit and interview with him. I haven't heard back from him on that communication. Um, I have met with Ms. Gibson at this point. I've gone through the case file uh, superficially, um, and I've read through both of the intake packets. Um, I have let Ms. Gibson know that what I'd be doing today is requesting that the court order both parties to get a hair follicle test. We have pretty serious um, substance abuse allegations from both parties. Um, I have reasons to believe that Mr. Bissig is still consuming. And uh, I know he's attending. He's 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 been upfront about saying he's attending um, AANA um, and, and participating in treatment. Um, I would love to see his attendance uh, sheet that's being signed for him so I can see who is uh, signing off on his attendance in that program. Um, and I would love to have both parties receive a hair follicle test. That will give me some very much needed information. Uh, 
Uh, so Mitt, let me turn to petitioner first, uh, Mr. Bissick. Um, I am inclined to grant an order specifically a hair follicle test for the GAL to be able to move forward with recommendations to the court. Do you have any objection to providing that? No, but I did send that packet more than a week ago. You may have. She got, you may have sent it two weeks ago. She got it last week. I sent it by email, so I don't see how that's possible. Okay. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm happy to pull up the date if we need to, but it, no, no, it's, it, yeah. it's all right. I'm just a little confused. That's fine. Okay. And, and I haven't received any word from the GL. Ms. Gibson, can you hear the court? Yes, I can, Your Honor. Okay. Do you have any objection to undergoing a hair follicle test, hopefully before our next review hearing? No, Your Honor, I have no objections to that. I just need to find a place to do that okay, and come up with the money, um, which I was going to ask my parents to help me with. Okay. Um, it looks like our next review hearing is January 17. Um, I'm not sure what the timeline. I think people can get these done fairly quickly. Um, do you think there'll be any issue getting that done January 17, Ms. Call? Do you think we need to set that out or... Um, in terms of that being the final rega uh, final gal review, I think it will need to be set out. I don't anticipate that we will have enough information by then to complete a report, especially with the holidays between now and then. Okay. Um, there's been quite a delay in trying to get these appointments set up. Um, but I believe if um, they're both able to get in at awakenings, I believe they can get that hair follicle test done fairly quickly and, and get the results back. Uh, this time of year, I imagine results are going to take a week or two to get returned. Um, but uh, I mean, I think we're going to have to push the final gal review, but I think we could get the hair follicle in that within and, that time frame. Okay. Your Honor. Yeah, go I ahead. I did call awakenings and they do not do five panel hair follicle testing because I did call the same day that I had a meeting with Miss Call. Okay. Um, and they do not do those. That's why I'm saying I have to find somewhere to do it. And I'm potentially going to see, I looked up some places. Quest Diagnostics here in town might potentially do it. So I am going to call there. And if they do, I would be more than happy to mes mes message Mr. Bissig and let him know that they do or do not do it so that he can get his done as well. Okay. I think that is helpful. Let's, um, was there anything regarding visitation that the parties needed to re-review today? Otherwise, I think I will set out um, I think I'll probably cancel our January 17th hearing and move that into um, maybe mid to late February. There was one thing that uh, me and the guardian midlineum had talked about that okay. I would like to bring up. Um, Mr. Bissig does not have the correct car seat for the two-year-old Aries. Um, he needs to be in a five-point harness car seat, not a booster seat that is used with the seat belt. That's not true, Your Honor. She hasn't seen the inside of my parents' car. Um, What's I not? Do. Well, hold on, you two. No, no, no. Let address all of your comments to me, not each other. Um, so, Mr. Bissick, when you say that is not true, what do you mean? That she hasn't seen what car seats I put him in. Okay. Do you have him in a five-point harness? I do. Can you provide a picture of that five-point harness car seat? in your car to the GAL? Yes, if necessary. It is necessary. So yeah, um, I'm, I, I am going to put in an order, um, and let me just triple check. The youngest child is how old? He's two and a half. Yeah, so he does need a five point harness. Um, so I am gonna put in the bench order that, um, since you say you already have it, I'm going to say within 24 hours, I want you to send a, a picture of a five-point harness car seat in your car. So it needs the picture needs to show that it is your vehicle or whatever vehicle, if it's your parents' vehicle, fine. It just needs to show that it is the vehicle that you pick up or drive the, the child in with a five-point harness car seat. <clears throat> And until the GAL has that, um, I do think it is inappropriate for you to be driving the child around because a booster seat is not appropriate for a two and a half year old. It is not safe. 
Well, the person who is watching and supervising me is here and she can verify that's not true. That's I'm, I don't need to take anyone's word for it. I'm just asking you to send a picture of it in the vehicle to the GAL. Okay. That, are you not able to do that? No, I said that's fine. Okay. Um, I did. Go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. I Ms. did Ms. have um, two more things I wanted to discuss. One hmm. was I wanted to speak with you about potentially extending a visitation time. The, uh, sorry, extending the amount of time for visitation on the 23rd so that Mr. Bissett could get more time with them on the 23rd to do Christmas with them potentially going to six hours that day instead of the four it and since that is more visitation and not less um if the two of you agree on that I am fine with it I don't need to put that okay. in an order if it's just a, if it's a holiday thing and you're not asking me to restrict visitation you just want okay. to give them a little more time um Mr. Bissick I assume you're in agreement with that yeah that'd be nice Perfect. There we go. I think that's all that needs okay, to perfect. on that issue. Yeah. I wasn't sure. I wanted to just double check. And then the last thing was, um, I had messaged Mr. Bissick on November 30th to give him um, 15 days notice of a trip that me and the kids will be taking to visit my mom and my stepdad for their Christmas with their grandparents. Um, I let him know that because we have been doing Saturdays, we will need to work something else out. It is now the 13th. We leave on Friday, which is the 15th. We will not be returning till the 17th. Okay. There's been no communication. I verbally reminded him last Saturday. He has not communicated with me about what he wants to do for visitation. So I'm not sure what I should be doing because I don't want to get in trouble for not having visitation, but I have given him ample time to communicate with me and to work something out with me for visitation this week. Understood. So what day, so while you're we, gone, will he just be missing one visitation day? Yeah. So we've only been doing it once a week, Saturdays from 3 PM to 7 PM, because there's no set day that we have to do it. Right. That's just what has been working for both of us. Um, but seeing as we will be gone this Saturday, I wanted to give him ample time to work out something else with me. Okay. Is there a makeup day, Mr. Bissick, that will work for you because they will be gone this upcoming Saturday? Well, it's supposed to be one to two days a week, and she's only given me one. Yeah, it does say one to two times per week, but that's not my question. My question is, since they will be gone this Saturday, and I'm not going to preclude her from being gone over a Saturday for a holiday trip, my question is, is there a makeup day this week or next week that would take the place of this Saturday for you that works for you and the supervisor? I'm pretty sure we can figure something out. Well, why don't we do it here? Cause it sounds like, I feel like this is gonna be a little bit stressful for her and you seem a little ambivalent about whether you're gonna work with her on this. So I just, I would, I would like to set that date here. You said you have the supervisor with you. What will yes. work? What will work for the two of you? Um, how about Friday before they leave? Well, I think they're leaving. So Friday would work if it was the three to seven, like we originally planned. We do not, we have to be at the train station by 730 on Friday. So that would work for me. This Friday, meaning in if two days? Yes, if the three to seven would work or any time from after three to seven o'clock, that would work for me. Mr. Bissick, does that work for you? I feel like that's cutting it a little close for getting your train, but if you think it'll work, I'm happy. Well, it's right there by the police station. Yeah, so. the police station and the train station are right next to each other, so that works. Oh, that's true. That is right up here. Okay. Um, well, Mr. Bissick and Ms. Gibson, if that works for you, I think that's great. It gives me a little travel stress, but if it works for the two of you, <laughs> I'm all in favor of it. That works for me if that works for him. Okay. I know I'm one of those people that shows up like four hours early for my flight. So, Oh, our train but... doesn't leave till eight. That's why I'm saying we have to be there at 730. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was leaving at 730. No, no, no. Eight o'clock. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and then also, I'm not, again, since it's just a one-off, I'm not going to put that in a specific order, but it will be in the clerk's minutes if an issue comes up that we need to address. But what I am going to say this week, and instead of Saturday, Mr. Bissett, go ahead and plan on Friday from three to seven. Um, okay. It's not like I have a choice in the matter. Well, I you do. I asked you what worked for you. So, and, and the choices, I'm, what I'm telling you is I'm not going to preclude a travel trip over the holidays. So we're trying to find a date that works for you. That's kind of part of parenting through a separation is it's maybe not always going to be either party's first choice, but I'm asking what is workable. So if Friday well, doesn't what's work, workable is I should be able to get my two days a week. All right, sir, I'm not going to get in an argument with you. What I'm asking is, is Friday a sufficient day for you? Does it work for you? Or do you want to look at a different day, perhaps next week? That works. Okay. Okay. Anything else we need to do before I look at new dates for our case? I, that's all I had, Your Honor. Okay. So in the bench order today, I'm going to be requiring hair follicle testing by both parties Let's say, um, try to get those done. I'll say three weeks just because I know holidays are coming up and I know that you might need to save a little money for it. But um, unless Ms. Call, you want that to be a tighter turnaround. No, I think that's fair. I think both of okay. these parties are going to need a minute to put that in order. And I offer my okay. apologies to Ms. Gibson. I thought Awakenings would be able to do that for her. I must have had some wires crossed there on location. Okay, that's okay. And then um, I will require in the next 24 hours that Mr. Bissick send um, confirmation of the five point harness in the car that the minor child will be in the youngest child. Um, so let's let's cancel January 17. And certainly this doesn't preclude any party from noting an issue on to our Wednesday docket if something comes up. But instead of doing the formal review date on January 17th, let's go out to, let's try for February, well, how about February 21, Wednesday at 9 a.m.? That works for me, Your Honor. That works for me. And Mr. Bissick, does uh, Wednesday, February 21 work for you? Perfect. Okay. All right. We've got you on there. And I will get that bench order written. Anything else either <coughs> need from me today? Nope. No, Your Honor. I'm got everything I needed today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Call, anything from you? That's all I needed. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and then let's go to, I'm just going to go up to the start of my docket here. Well, actually, let me take, I see um, Attorney Swenson present, um, and I see Ms. Teft present.